Brother J.R. is in the house. And I know I was just informed this last evening that your sister, a pastor, and I'm just honored you're here with us tonight. I hope I'll get to meet you after church tonight. So don't hurry off. Absolutely. Amen. And everybody that's here, glory to God. It's so good just to see you tonight on a Tuesday night. It's just awesome uh, of what the Holy Spirit's been uh, doing. And I'm not going to hold you too long tonight. Uh, I know I, I, I kind of Sunday evening and, and service last night, uh, I know I, I went a kind of long, but I'm going to do my best not to do that tonight. But I do have something to share with you. I'll be getting up early in the about, about 3.30 in the morning and uh, heading home. And uh, tomorrow night, got a, a date. Uh, 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 tomorrow night, got a date with my a girlfriend. Amen. All right. All right. And uh, she's the butter on my toast and the jam and my biscuit and I love that lady tonight and Amen. and tomorrow Amen. night we're going to see uh, we're driving into New Orleans tomorrow night and going to hear uh, going to hear casting crowns elevation worship and a hill song tomorrow night in New Orleans and so I just hope I make it safe in and out in New Orleans because that place is bad. <laughs> Had somebody ask me the other day, I was in a revival, they said, do you ever go, and of course, if they're not from that area, they call it New Orleans. I don't know where that is, but if you know where <laughs> a New Orleans is, I know where that is, but they said, do you ever go into New Orleans? I said, N not if I don't have to. <laughs> I don't go there. I, uh, amen. I mind my own beeswax. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I'm just excited. I tell you, I've enjoyed my time. And I want to say uh, so much a thank you tonight to your pastor, to those who attend here, to Pastor uh, Joe, so much for uh, having me. Oh, yeah. The, we're glad to have you two tonight. Uh, who you are. But uh, I want to hasten to my assignment. I'm going to kind of slow down some tonight if I, I'm I good tonight. And I want to preach a few moments of, on a subject entitled Faith Comes in hands. Faith comes in hands. C-A-N-S. Faith comes in hands. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Faith comes in hands. And I'm going to open some cans here go. tonight. Come on, bring it. And uh, I hope you'll we open to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. I believe that tonight that one of the most important factors to keep in mind as a born again Christian is that our growth and maturity in Christ it can not go forward unless we understand that we are to be men and women of faith. Amen. Did y'all hear me tonight? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. You're not going to go forward in your relationship with Jesus if you don't understand that you're supposed to be a person of faith. I like what it says in the book of Romans tonight. The, the first chapter in the 17th verse, it says this, 
For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Did y'all see that tonight? For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And as it is written, the just, those who have been justified, the just shall live by feelings. Well, you know that's what you do sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hello? Yes. The just shall live by faith. I want to tell you that you and I tonight are to be a people of faith. Amen. Who believe that our God can do anything and everything. Nothing too difficult tonight for the Lord. He's a mighty God. Amen. Oh, I don't think y'all heard me. He's a mighty God. Oh, great God Almighty. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Flung the stars into the universe and told them to stand still. Took his hand. Cut out the oceans and the seas. Uh, day, amen. He said in the book of Genesis, he declared, he declared this. He said, let there be light. And you said, what's the big deal about that? Because he declared in the first chapter, and I think the third verse, he said, let there be light. And that's a big deal because he said that before he ever created the sun, before he ever created the moon, he said, let there be light, and light came. Mm, amen. Yes. Amen. And the just shall live by faith. Yes. Faith. Yeah. Let's look at Galatians, the second the chapter. And verse number 20 tonight. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. I thought about this the other day. It's sitting in my outline tonight, but I got to share this. That's a cute little baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not in my outline either. But... Uh, <laughs> Just grabbed my, it just, just kind of stuck out at me. But the other night, I was in, in prayer, and I had this a thought in my spirit. If I give a gift to somebody, it's not a based upon their love for me it's based upon my love for them mm. oh y'all i buy teresa things all the time it's not based upon her love for me it's based upon my love for her Amen? Amen. And, and, and there are so many uh, times that Jesus, he does so much for us. And it's not uh, based upon my love for him. But because I could never love him enough. Yes. Yes. And I want to tell you that you can't either. Yes. Yeah. I know you've heard that. I love you to the moon and back. No, well, I understand that. Amen. But you can never love him enough. He shed his blood for you. He gave his life for you. He hung between heaven and earth. Amen. It's not based upon your love for him tonight. It's based upon his love for you. Yes. yes. Amen. 
That's why he blesses you the way he does. Because it's based upon his love for you. Aren't you glad he loves us? Yes. Amen. And here's what I love about him so much. It's his love does not have strings attached. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Uh, you know what's the, uh, the, uh, the awesome uh, uh, thing tonight? And I'm not even in my message tonight yet. Amen. But the awesome thing tonight about the relationship I have uh, with my wife tonight is that she has seen me at my best and she's seen me at my worst and she still loves me. Yeah. Oh, Brother J.I., I know that your wife has seen you at your bed. And she has seen you at your worst. <laughs> and Sister Bobby still loves you. Isn't that how that our Jesus is tonight? He's seen us at our best. And he's seen us at our worst. And he still loves you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I got to get into my message tonight. That's a little stuff in second there. In this message tonight, I want to share with you an important axiom, A-X-I-O-M, or an accepted truth that will help us all to grow and mature in our faith. This is an axiom that will enable you to live in the realm of faith that God intends for you. Because I believe tonight that faith comes in cans. And I've asked them tonight to share with you an illustration I love to, to show you that. So are y'all prepared? And I want you to know this is so super spiritual tonight. You're just going to jump out of your seats and shout. And... Okay. The shark? Oh, there's a spinach. Open says me. Open says me. There's a spinach. Comes out, eats it. All of a sudden, he becomes a superhuman. There's the muscles. Muscles. There's the muscles. The, the muscles, as he called them. He goes up. And he knocks everybody out. Hello? It happened because he opened the can. Yes. Are y'all in? Am I doing okay, Pastor Joe? It happened because he opened a can of spinach. He became superhuman. He became something he couldn't be if he didn't eat spinach. And I'm going to tell you some things to help you become super in the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. Because you may go in the bone boot Clark Kent, but you're going to come out Superman tonight. Glory to God. Y'all not hearing me. You may go in the bone boot Clark Kent, but I believe if you walk the walk of faith, you can come out of that, uh, amen, out of that bone booth every time. Uh, rip your shirt off and say, I'm going to do all things uh, in Jesus us tonight. Woo. Oh, come on. Somebody help me. I want to hurry to talk to you about the three cans of faith. The three cans of faith. Ooh. There are three areas of understanding are three cans of faith I would like to share with you today. We must know how to drink from these cans before we can appropriate the kind of faith that God desires for us to have. And they are as follows. Here is the three cans of faith. I want to talk to you about tonight. Here's number one. Here's a, a faith. Can.
And number one is that is that God can do anything and everything. Amen. Amen. I said, y'all, y'all didn't Come hear on. me. Come on. Here is here's number one. God can do anything and everything. I love tonight <clears throat> what it says in the book of Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter, and the 17th verse says this. Oh, Lord, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. And there is nothing too hard for you. Mm. Oh, did y'all hear that tonight? Yes. Oh, Lord, behold, that you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. You may be sitting here tonight and thinking, but you don't know the thing I'm going through. But you don't know the thing that's happening in my home. But you don't know the thing I left as I came out of my home and closed the door behind me. I left some situations, some issues I left behind me. And, and man, but you don't know the thing that's going on in my marriage. You don't know the thing that's happening in my children tonight. I've come to tell you nothing is too hard for God. Even Jeremiah said nothing's difficult for you, God. No difficult situations that you're not able to, middle, to, amen, to move into and get in the middle of them. Uh, the thing you need to allow to happen tonight is let Jesus get in the middle of your problem, uh, of your situation, uh, and understand nothing's too big for my God. Uh, yeah, and even Jeremiah understood that. Uh, he said nothing's too hard for you. It may be hard for me tonight. It may be hard for Pastor Sandra. I'm not your answer. See, that's your problem. As you look to everybody else to solve your issues and solve your problems, uh, if you would just take the time to turn your eyes upon Jesus uh, and understand he's got my answers. Uh, he's the answer to my problems tonight. Uh, my daddy don't have my answer. My mama don't have my answer. They can bail me out for so long, uh, but I've got to get to a place I totally and rely upon God because I understand nothing's too hard for God. <clears throat> Do you believe that tonight? Can I get a better amen? Amen. Job is a remarkable example of someone who has withstood the trials and hardships of life and faith who came forth with a faith that was more precious than gold. Here's what it says in the book of Job tonight. The f a chapter number of, of 42 and verse number 2. He said this. Job said this after he lost everything. After he lost his sons. After he lost his daughters. After he lost his cattle. After he lost his sheep. After he lost everything he possessed. Amen. And he said in ashes. Uh, sackcloth and ashes. Uh, he's, he lost everything. Naked I came into this earth. Uh, naked I go out of this earth. Uh, amen. He, came, he was sitting there in the middle. He was a wealthy man that lost everything in a matter of hours. Uh, but in the middle of it all. Here's what the Job said. He said I know uh, that you can do everything. And that no uh, purpose of yours can be withheld from you. He said Job in the middle of losing everything. He said God I may have lost everything but I know you can do everything. Come on somebody. I know what it is to lose everything except the clothes on my back because of a hurricane a, a man that's named a, a Katrina and I lost everything Teresa and I. Amen. Except the clothes on our back. I lost I was down to just the clothes in a suitcase but I'm telling you today that God renewed and God restored and God replaced and God gave back because anytime the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy, God said I'm going to trump that. I've come that you might have life and life more abundant and we're called to live a life of abundance. Amen. Amen. Oh glory to God. 
Moses, you know what? We sang that a song last night. It is my absolute favorite song. It is my absolute favorite song. Right now. It's my absolute favorite song. Right now. But there's a part in the song I can't sing. I, I can't force my... <laughs> it's by elevation worship. The name of the song is Do It Again. But there's a part in there that says, He's never failed me yet. I cannot say that word yet. Mm. I don't sing that a part of the song. It's like me saying to you, I haven't committed adultery on my wife yet. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I got the propensity to do it. But I haven't done. I'm not doing alcohol yet. I'm not, you know, I'm not drinking yet. I might. Not doing drugs yet. I might do it. And whenever that, I see that, that song is the most awesome song. I love every part of that song. Except when they say, he's never failed me yet. Whenever I see that, there's something about me. I just can't say the word yet. Because I'm at a place in my life at 64 years old. I've lived life a lot more than some of you. And I can tell you, testify. Amen. You see, in the old churches, they used to have testimony services. But they had to stop having them. Uh, because the saints who would take over the church uh, and start to preach it and take up the go, y'all not helping me tonight. So they stopped having testimonies and besides that, there wasn't many that had any. Oh, come on, help me somebody. But I'm telling you tonight, I'm here to stand and tell you, uh, I can stand up and testify and tell you, God has never failed me, period. There's no yet, there's no maybe, there's no might. I wish I had five people that agreed with me to give God a praise in this house. Uh, God will not fail you. A uh, pastor a pastor may fail you, a preacher may fail you, a prophet may fail you, a member of your family may fail you, but God is not going to fail you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, you say, well, Brother Mike, God is, I'm sure that's not what they had in mind. With it. I don't care. I, I can't say it. If it means something else to you, great. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't say it. <clears throat> because he doesn't fail. Ever. Right. Never. That's right. You say, well, can you bank your life on that? Yeah. I have. Hey, there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Already have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Already do. Every week we live by faith. Amen. Every week we live by faith. Thank God we stay busy, but thank God he opens doors. Yeah. I'll leave it up to God. He's a great uh, a booking agent. <laughs> Hallelujah. I call them holy hookups. <laughs> I glory to God. Amen. Pastor Sandra, he came to hear me. At a church, I'm, and and I, I it wasn't short time after that in July, I was in a revival at her church. I met Brother Ben, I met Pastor Joe at Pastor Sanders house. I'm here tonight because he came to hear me at Pastor Sanders house. I went to Pastor Seven, amen, and she heard me at another church. I call them holy hookups. Uh, that's the way I operate our ministry. It's about divine connections. Uh, I got a text from somebody before church tonight receiving an invitation to minister at their church. I'm telling you, it's about putting your faith in God and to know every minute of every hour, God's got you your back cans cans M Moses was another person who believed in God's 
ability to do anything and everything. As a result, he, he was a tremendous person of faith. And victory, who was responsible for leading God's people out of the bondage of Egypt and slavery. I like what it says in the book of Deuteronomy, the third chapter in verse number 24. Oh, Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness in your mighty hand. He goes on and says, for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. Yeah. Come on. What God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works? Who's able to compare unto our God? Step forward. Who's able to do what our God is able to do? Muhammad can't do it. Buddha can't do it. Allah can't do it. I'm telling you, none of them are able to do it. There's no God that's able to compare what our God is able to do. Come on, somebody. Right then, God is God. Amen. Just as Job... And Moses, we too must believe and confess that God is able to do anything and everything. All of the great heroes of faith based their faith on what God was able to do. They knew that God could do anything and everything whenever he so chose. I mean, let me just add this tonight. He is not your valet. He is not your valet. He doesn't operate on your time frame and your timetable or your time schedule tonight. Well, they used to sing a song at old church. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him. But, but he's always right on time. He's an on time God. Isn't that about God? Amen. Amen. That he's an on time God. I know that you want him to be early. <laughs> oh, I told somebody the other day, the God I learned and the God I have left, who I serve is never late, but seldom early. <laughs> Hello? But he's an on time God. How many of you can testify tonight that he's an on-time God? If I, if I had five people that could just say he's an on-time God. Uh, he came there just when I needed him. Uh, he showed up in the middle of the situation. Uh, he didn't operate on my time screen, on, uh, on the time frame I had. Uh, but he moved at the time that I needed him to move. Uh, I thought I needed him earlier. But in the end, he was there right on time. Amen. Amen. Come on. Do you have this kind of belief in your heart? If so, begin to drink from this can of faith and allow the faith of God to incite you to move forward in God's new ways. Let me share with you this. Uh, About, about four, about five months ago, uh, Teresa and I sold, it's over there on my table, brother. About, Teresa and I sold personally into missions on a personal level. But, uh, but uh, I was in prayer and the Holy Spirit, he put a hunger and a desire in my heart to give more from our ministry side. Mm. 
from the uh, M&M side, McKnight and the industry side. And so I began to pray. And um, in prayer, the Holy Spirit spoke one word to me. He said the word, cups. And I said, what? You know how you do sometimes when the Holy Spirit speaks something that, uh, that you don't understand. You know, and you're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, what? He said, cups. So I called the uh, people who designed our, our uh, hats and our shirts that have been doing it f for years. And uh, I said to them, I said, I need a cup, a cheap enough, that, that's nice enough, that I can sell and, and make money enough to give to m m missions. I didn't know who I was going to sow it into. I didn't know who I was giving it to. All I knew is I was supposed to start raising money for missions. I didn't know who to give it to. Didn't have a clue. In September, at the end of September of this year, I was invited to attend a conference in Houston called M. Powerman Conference. John and Susan Norton uh, host that at their church. CP Church in Houston. And uh, so uh, he told me whenever he saw me, he said, I'd like to eat a, a lunch with you tomorrow. Can you meet with me for lunch? And I said, sure. So uh, after he taught a session, uh, he said, let's have a lunch together. I said, great. He said, he said, okay, they got us some sandwiches in a bag and I want us to sit here and talk. I said, great. And he said that him and Susan, uh, his wife, had just purchased a 60 acre home and it's a called the home of hope in Houston and it's for it's for children who have been involved in sex trafficking he began to talk to me about it, about what their, their vision is. One out of every five children sex or traffic in America go through Houston mm. on I-10. Mm. Did y'all hear me? Yes. One out of every five children who are sex traffic in America. The average age is eight years old. Jesus. I've got a 14 year old a grand a daughter. I mean a 15. I think she's a 15. Now. I can't imagine in my mind her being involved in sex trafficking. He was talking to me about five minutes and I said I'm in. <laughs> I'm all in. I said, I know why the Holy Spirit had me to buy the, the order cups now. Yeah. I know why the I called to, Teresa instantly. Teresa on my phone begins to cry. And, and he said, I'm the Holy Spirit for, for 10 years has been a, a dealing with my heart about that. But I didn't know how to go about doing it. I said, well, baby, we partnered with a home of hope now. I just sent him my first chat. Had somebody just last week, no, two weeks ago, I just shared the thing I shared with you tonight. After service, uh, they came up, handed me a check for $500.
Somebody else at the next, the same church handed me a, a, a check for $150. Somebody else, they walked up to me, $100 bill and another $100 bill. They said, we want to stop sex trafficking in America. But not only that, have a place. They meant that after they have them, after they have got, amen, after they have rescued the girls. They have a place where they can go and be healed and doctors can help them and like, uh, or whoever it is that helps them is able to help them and they can learn and tell me somebody. I'm telling you today, he's a big God. He's a big God. You see, here's one thing I learned about God is God is b b big on ideas but short on detail. Yes. Help me, pastors. He'll give you a big dream. He'll give you a big idea. He'll give you this thing you need, amen. And he don't give you no details at all. Help me. Come on, somebody. And because if he gave you every detail, there wouldn't be any faith involved. Come on. Amen. He's big on ideas. He'll I mean, he'll put all type of ideas in you. He'll give you all types of dreams in you and not give you a plan at all how to do it until it's his timing. But whenever he begins to put every piece together like a bit like Pastor Joe. Amen. That was in Minnesota. Heard one word. It was a, a, a Victoria. He did he had to take out an atlas or whatever it is and find Victoria, Texas. Uh, all he knew is he only heard one word. Is that right, Pastor? One word. And he acted on that one word. He didn't have every detail. Then years after that, he would be the pastor of Faith Family Church Hallettsville. He only had one word to go on. And sometimes that's all Oh, you God! Amen. 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 Right. I, I can't, I can't, I keep them, I'm out of them. I, I had to reorder some more because they go so fast. The cups do. But if you want to sow into it, I'll be glad to talk to you after church about it. He's a God. He's got big ideas. And he wants you to act in faith. Here's number two, and I'm going to hurry. Faith can, number two. Are y'all getting anything out of this tonight? Amen. 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 Faith can, number two. Jesus can and will give you what you need. Jesus can and will give you what you need. It is important for us to know that Jesus is on our side. He desires to give to us in a way that will produce great joy in our lives. I see too many Christian pastors, uh, help me now. I see too many Christians that don't have joy. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm talking about I'm talking about Holy Ghost spill. Yes. Christians that come to church have no have no a pep in their step, have no excitement in their life, no smiles on the on their uh, faces at all. I've come to tell you the joys in the journey. The joys in the journey. The joys in the journey. I read the other day that said to me, the, 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 the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Not meat or drink. It's righteousness. It's peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost. But I don't see many Christians in the churches I'm preaching, no matter the size of the church. I see a lot of sad sacks. I see a lot of unhappy people. I see a lot of people that don't participate in the worship at any level. They just sit there. They don't enter in. They don't, I don't even know why they even call the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Why in the world would you want to serve a Jesus who wasn't able to fill you up with joy? Amen. You see, your issue is, I don't know why. I'm, you see, your issue is, 
is that you're confused. And I don't mean that in a bad way tonight. But just listen to me. Is that you're confused. Because you think that a happiness and joy are the same a thing. And they're not. Because happiness depends on happenings. I said a happiness depends on happenings. You get a new dress. You get new shoes. Or you get a new hairdo. Or whatever you get. New, a new truck. You get something new. And you're just happy. Whew. I like these new shoes. They look good. I'm strutting. Or you get, you get a new outfit. Or you get something. It's a happening. But what I've learned about happenings. Is they don't last. Mm-hmm. Happenings fade. I've had, a, I, I've had several n- n- new vehicles before. And there's nothing like if you set in a new vehicle and it's got that new smell. Mm-hmm. And you don't want nobody to get near your car. Hey Amen. As a matter of fact, you'll go to H-E-B or, 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 or Walmart and you'll park it way out. <laughs> So nobody will ding your doors. That's right. You don't want nobody eat in your car. No happy meals. No, none of that. No, no grandkids. Oh, you eat at home. <laughs> but after a while, you every day, amen, you wash it, clean it. But after a while, the new wears off. You go for weeks and don't vacuum the carpet. You got a, a, a french fries between the seat. You know what happened? The happening, the new, has wore off. I know you can go to these. I, I saw them the other day. I was at a, 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 a Bucky's and they. They sell these uh, things you can hang in your a car in the shape of uh, Texas. And, and they had one that was called New Car Smell. <laughs> it's not going to make my car new again. <laughs> happenings. Happy depends on happenings. If you look up the whole word happy... Under that word is the word un, 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 happy. Have you known anybody that can be happy and then unhappy? Oh, oh, don't look at them. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, they can turn it off. Oh, they can be just, uh, and then uh, because happiness depends on happening. And if you're happy, you can be unhappy. But look at the word joy. There's no unjoy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because joy is not dependent upon a happening. Joy is based upon a relationship. Oh, come on, somebody. It's based upon a relationship with Jesus. I guess I accept him as my Savior, but I'm telling you, it's from that point on that he's able to give me joy unspeakable and full of glory. Not that we're not going to have tests, not that we're not going to have trials, not that we're not going to have heartache, not that we're not going to have pain, but in the middle of your pain, in the middle of your heartache, in the middle of everything going on in your world, you can lift your hands and give God a praise and let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. We must believe that Jesus can give to us whatever we have need of. John 16 and verse 23 says this. And in that day you shall ask me no, shall ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, of whatever you ask the Father in my name. He will give it to you. 
It says in the book of first, in the book of second of Peter, the first chapter and the third verse. As his divine, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue. I had some other things I was going to say under that can. But let me just go on to number three. Faith can number three is my favorite. It's my all-time favorite. You can do all things through Christ. Praise God. Amen. Yes, amen. You can do all things through Christ. Amen. I want you to know that now that we understand that God can do anything and everything and that Jesus desires to minister to her to us in faith by giving to us those things we have need of, we must understand also that we can do whatever he has asked or commissioned us to do. Philippians 4.13 My all-time favorite scripture I can. I can. I can do all things. All means all. I can do all things through Christ. Now, I want to stop here for a moment. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Jesus is His name and Christ is the office He functioned in. Mm. Jesus is His name and Christ is His office. The, the word Christ, it means the anointed one. The anointed one. I'm going to say something I want you to hear tonight. I want you to listen. When Jesus, he, he, he died, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your um, mind with, tonight with something. Don't throw it out. Chew on it. Whenever Jesus died, he ascended to the, the Bible says, he sits at the right hand of the Father. Is that right? When Jesus died, or rose on the third day, he ascended to the right hand of the Father, but Christ remained in the earth. Ah, uh, uh, chew on it a minute. When Jesus died, he arose on the third day, ascended to the right hand of the Father, he sat on the right hand of the Father, but Christ remained in the earth until he could find another body to flow through. That happened in Acts chapter 2. Oh, y'all not get it. You say, well, I've never heard that before. Well, don't throw it out because you haven't. Just chew on it a minute. Because you under, amen, because you gotta understand the word Christ means the anointed one. 
It says, I can do all things through it, the anointing. I can do all things through it, the, the, through the anointed one who strengthens me. Everything that the church is able to do today is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. Well, who is the power of the Holy Ghost? Is he not the anointed? Is he not the anointing? Come on. <laughs> you said, Brother McKnight, hold on a minute. No, listen to me. If you go to the book of St. Luke today, it says how St. Luke 18 uh, how God let me find it. Let me find it because you Y'all looking at me like, what? Oh. Okay. St. Luke 4. Is the, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, if you look up that word because in the, the Greek language tonight, it is defined as the reason for. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me. Is that what it says? It says the Spirit of the Lord is a... Amen. If you'll go to the book of... Don't go there. I'll, in the book of Samuel. Chapter number 16. Verse number 13. It says, Then Samuel took the horn of all and anointed him in the midst of his... Brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yes. He was anointed first. I know some of you, I'm really messing with your theology. <laughs> but we get the cart before the horse. Or the horse before the car, whatever how you say it. You see, I always believe, but look what the scripture said. Even Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've got the Spirit of the Lord upon me. And here is the reason why. Because I'm anointed. I'm anointed. The Spirit is upon me because I'm anointed. Look what it says in about David. It says, after Samuel anointed him with oil, from that day forward, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Right. I'm going to say something. You can, it's hard if you don't uh, 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 agree with it. That's all right. <clears throat> Amen. Because you don't, it, uh, don't mean it's heresy. That's right. Come on. Just listen and just uh, chew on it. Because I hear, I hear things from some, some uh, 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 preachers I like a lot. And there's things, to, you know, that we, sometimes I'll go, ooh, I need to chew on that. Because it stretches me. And I wanted you to know tonight, if the church, if it can ever understand that they are the anointed. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. If they can ever understand. I grew up, see, I grew up in old church. Old church. I know some of you, you don't have a clue about that. But I grew up in an old church where the only person in the church that was anointed, it was the pastor. 
And, and it was almost, it was, it was almost a, a God accomplished. He's anointed. And then they would, and then they had their all time, every preacher had their all time favorite scripture. It was like their six shooter. <laughs> Touch not God's anointing and do his prophets no harm. <coughs> Amen. Help me, okay, Pastor Joe. Amen. That was like their six shooter. You couldn't say nothing. You couldn't, you, you better. But then I got a real revelation. The pastor, he wasn't the only one anointed. I got a real revelation. I was anointed. Praise God. I may not, but uh, I don't have time to get into this tonight. I really don't. But come on, it was a different anointing. What? Okay, all right. I'll slide. It was a, I'll get at you. It was a different anointing. He was anointed to pastor. I was anointed to do something else. That's there you right. go. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see, our problem is that I don't have time to get into this tonight. Uh, I've done opened up a can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our problem today in the church is, is, the, is there are unhappy Christians who are in the church because they're operating outside of their anointing. Mm. I've walked into some churches that, who didn't know I have a clue who I was. And their greeters were not anointed. You know why I knew that? Because when you walked in, they didn't smile, and they had bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be a greeter, you don't need to have bad breath. Amen. Oh, I know that y'all can't handle the truth tonight. Y'all like, Come what? On. <laughs> Come on. Say it like and they didn't have any joy. If you're going to have, to, if you're going to open your doors to the community, then you better have people at your door that's going to smile at them and tell them and really make them feel a part of the family. Amen. 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 Come on. Yes. I pastor, I pastor a church, and I always the the most of every church I pastor, it was a it was a, a multi. Of racial, and I had a a young African American a lady in my church who come down the aisle on a Sunday. I saw her on a Sunday night, and she, she come down the aisle, and I I saw her sweet lady, and I walked down, and I said, "Hey, what the you know? How you doing tonight? You know, just make a casual conversation." She says, "You know, Pastor, I know what I'm going to do now in the church." I said, oh, is that right? Yes, I know what I'm going to do. I have found my call. I said, well, what's that? He said, I'm going to sing on the praise team. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> he said, well, why not? I said, well, baby, because you can't sing. <clears throat> oh, so, you see, we cuddle. I mean, not coddle. People, because we don't want to hurt their uh, 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 feelings, and they're in ministries, they have no uh, business being. Amen. Amen. Uh, and she looked at me, and I could see her. I said, I want to help you find your gifting. Because I know that you are gifted to do something. And tell me what you love. And she said, oh, I love little babies. I said, is that right? I said, do you know I need help in the nursery? She said, I would love to help in the nursery. Her calling, it wasn't to sing on the praise team. I couldn't have let her. And she would get so frustrated because she'd be singing off key. And then the worship leader is upset at me. Because I said they could sing on the team. 
And they have no business up there. That's what Jonah. <clears throat> you see, if we would just learn things, simple things like this. So I helped her find her anointing. Her anointing was to work in the nursery. It wasn't very but a few months after that that she was over the entire nursery and was happy as she could be. Glory to God. If I would have been in the nursery, I would have been scratching the walls to get out. And the most unhappy people in the church are people that are operating outside of their anointing. I pastored. I know what I'm talking about. But see, I grew up in the old... I'm not going to get through with this tonight. I'm going to... You see, I grew up in old church. If there was somebody who came to you <coughs> and they said to you, I feel like I'm supposed to leave the church. You know what you did? You gave them a job. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did it. I know what I'm talking about. I would make them, I would put a guilt a, a complex on them. Man, I sh sh or need somebody to help me in this time. Apartment or in that apartment. And you know what they would do? Is they would do it out of guilt. It isn't they were anointed to do it. And you know, I want everybody to listen to me. Every pastor, listen to me. I'm not, I can tell you this because I know for a fact. I've been in a full time the ministry over 35 years. I'm known a novice at this. I've uh, pastored five uh, churches. I know what I'm talking about. The most unhappy people, the most miserable people in any church are the people who are operating outside of their anointing. They're doing a job where there's just nobody else to do it. And they have an attitude about it. See it all the time. And they're doing it out of guilt. Because they don't want to, they don't want to disappoint. Uh, 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 Pastor Sandra. Because they love her so much. And they don't want to disappoint the junior because they love him so much. Hello? If you could ever learn, I want everybody to listen. You know what you need to do? Is you need to get in your lane. Get in your lane. Amen. And when you get in your lane, that's where you're anointed. That's where you will flow in your greatest anointing. You can. Here's the third can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can. I'm not going to. Oh, that's good. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I cannot uh, do it in myself. I can only uh, do it through Christ. I can only do it through Christ's anointing. I can only do it through Him. I can't uh, do it through my talent. I can't do it through my ability. I can only do it through Christ. If I don't have His anointing, I love what I love what uh, Charles uh, Haddock Spurgeon said. He said these words: "Apart." From the Spirit, do nothing. It's when we try to create it in our flesh that we're frustrated. I know what it is. Can I say this? I know what it is to try my best to start programs in my church. And it wouldn't work. I couldn't get the help. 
And I get angry. Oh, come on. Somebody please be honest tonight. I get upset because nobody would volunteer. And I know they should have been doing it. And the Holy Ghost told me one time. He said, how long are you going to keep? Amen. How long are you going to continue to kick this dead horse? <laughs> and so I got up on a Sunday. I said, we're not doing this anymore. I heard in my church, uh, hey. <laughs> a pastor's not going to uh, beat us up anymore because there's no volunteers. <laughs> and smiling. I love you, but you, you know you should be helping in that department. You, I love you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you low down right in scandal. You know you're supposed to be helping in rural rangers or helping in girls clubs or helping. Find your anointing. You can do all things to Christ. Look, let me tell you this. I'm gonna be through in five in five minutes. I was 18 years old. A hippie, a, a dope smoking, freaky hippie, had hair down to here, wore wore a bell bottoms and flip flops, <laughs> <laughs> and a, a, a muscle shirt with no muscles. <laughs> Listening to, listen to, no, 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 Grand Funk Railroad, Led Zeppelin, smoking dope, didn't have no intention. I was angry at everybody. I was mad at everybody because I had a speech impediment. I was mad at my two sisters and my two brothers because because the, uh, the fact that they didn't stutter and I did. And I was mad at them. I didn't want to have nothing to do with them because I got cheated in life. And I was angry at God, at the world, and I was going to do everything I could to sin. The only problem was I had a praying mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only was she a praying mother, but up until the day that she got Alzheimer's and dementia, he would Fast three days every week, only water. Mm. All of my life she did that. A oh, woman of faith and prayer. Mm -hmm. She taught me about fasting. I, I didn't hear it from Jensen Franklin. I heard it from my mama. She, she would say, son, if you want the power of God in your life, you got to live a life of fasting. Amen. You got to fast if you want to have a life of power. 80 something years old. Listen to me. Early, early 80. Late uh, 70s, early 80. I called her one day in July. I was in a meeting someplace. I said, Mama, how you doing? Oh, uh, oh, son, I'm doing, I'm doing great. I said, where are you? Oh, I came down here. Listen to me. Here's what she told me. I came down here uh, to a truck stop. And I'm leading the uh, truckers uh, to Jesus. <laughs> I said, Mama, you, uh, it's July. It is the month of July in Louisiana. It's hot outside. It's over 90 
degrees, 100 heat index or more. And she said, I know, baby, I'm poor and sweat, but I'm telling truckers about Jesus. You see, her gifting was to tell people about Jesus. Come on, somebody. And she was at the truck stop, and when they would come in to put diesel in their trucks, she would come up behind them, and they couldn't refuse her because she was so sweet. Hallelujah. So she would accept what she was saying because she was a sweet little old lady telling them about Jesus, and she told me they would kneel right there beside the gas pump and give their hearts to Jesus. Come on, somebody. So I'm out sinning. I'm out shack. I'm doing all kind of stuff I shouldn't be doing and mama's praying for me. I went to her house one night. She said, son, I had a dream. I said, oh. I don't want to hear it. She said, you're going to sit down and you're going to listen. I had a dream about you. She said, I saw a horse in a big, in in a, a a big open area that's got uh, arena. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) I saw a horse in an arena. Oh, he was a, uh, he was a, a bucking, a, a wild stallion. He's doing this, his head. Nobody was able to tame him. A, a bucking stallion. And the Lord spoke to me in that dream. And he said, that's your son, Steve. I've, called, I've laid my hand up on him. I've called him to preach. And he's trying to buck away from it. He's a bucking stallion. But I'm about to tame him. Ah, woo! I said to her, I said, I've heard enough. I got up and walked out. <laughs> Every chance she, she would tell me to come to her house. I'm telling you, I wasn't a Christian, so this is how sinners sin. Y'all know that? Sinners sin. I picked her up one day. I had, I, I, Lord, I need to quit. I picked her up one day, but I won't be here anymore, but, you know, for... Well, I hope I'll be asked sometime to come back. But anyway, uh, I picked her up one day. I had a 1966 blue Volkswagen. I knew it was blue because I spray painted it blue. (laughs) (coughs) Hippie. I picked her up. I, I took her someplace. She came back the whole time. Jesus is, Jesus is, Jesus is, Jesus is. And she got out of, of my car. And I hate to tell you, I did this, but I was a fucking stallion. And I was mad at my mother and everybody else. And my mother, she gets out of my car after she had been preaching to me at, everywhere. She went to TGNY. I know that y'all don't know what it is. TGNY is, but uh, I'm talking old school stuff here. Amen. Montgomery Ward. Uh-huh. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway. Uh-huh. And I took it all over the place, and, she, and I got sick of it. And I, I, I looked at her, I said, get. I pulled up right out of her house. I said, get out of my car. I said, I hate you. I hate you. I don't want nothing else to do with you. That was sin talking to her, not Steve. Y'all hearing me? Yes. And I said, you get out of my car. She got out of the car. And, I left. and as she's headed up to the doorsteps, I shouted, I hate you. And she turned around and said, you may hate me, but I love you. And you're going to get saved. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> 18 years old. I'm going to close with this one. I got saved and I asked a, a pastor, could I go to the church and pray at night? There's been two times in my life I've heard, I've heard the, the audible voice of God. I'm talking the audible voice of God. Two times in my life. The f- first time it was 
when I was 18 years old. And he said to me these words. And I didn't know the, the voice of the Spirit or nothing like that. Or even the voice of, of who he was. And I'm in the church and I'm saying, Jesus, use me. Oh, you don't ask him that if you're not serious. <laughs> yeah. Because he will. Yes. Right. <clears throat> oh, don't say it because it's a religious thing to say. That's right. Jesus, use me. But don't be stupid. You know. Yep. Jesus, use me. And he said these words to me. I thought, you know, he said, I have called you to preach. And I said, shut up, devil. <laughs> and that's the truth. I didn't know the voice of God. But, and so I continued to pray. And I said, Jesus, excuse me. And he said, I've called you to preach. And I said these words. I looked up like this, a hippie. And I said, God, in case you don't know, I stutter. <laughs> <laughs> and st stutterers don't preach I've had three major magazines to do articles on <clears throat> one of the articles that a magazine it did it was entitled stutterers can't preach right wrong mm -hmm. charisma uh, has done articles on me and I'm amazed at the fact that he uses me Stutter. I looked up to heaven and I said, I stutter, God, I can't preach. And he said to me these words. I never forget them as long as I live. Can y'all get some music ready, please? He said to me these words. He said, if you will do what I have called you to do, I will anoint you and my people shall know. I have called you. You see, I can do all things. It's a lot more to me, of me than a shirt. It says I can do all things. It's a lot more to me than you know what really blesses me is whenever is whenever parents will bring their children up to talk to me that has a speech impediment. I got a, I was in a six week revival in Pensacola, Florida when that article it came out. My cell phone rings one day and it's a phone number I'm not familiar with but I felt impressed to answer it. And I said, hello, He made night. And the voice on the other end said, I would like to introduce myself to you. My name is Mrs. So-and-so. And I am the head of the come, the come, I'm gonna, I hope I say this right. The commutative Disorders Department at this university. 
and I've read your article and I wanted to ask you, would you be willing to come and speak to our speech therapist? I, I said to her, excuse me one second. I took my phone, I set it up against my chest like this, and I went, <laughs> I'm serious. I said, you're saying to me that you want me, a stutterer, to come and speak to your speech therapist at this major university. She said, yes, sir. Mm. I went. You know, when you think that you're going to go and speak at a major university, it isn't a Christian university, it's just a major university, and you're going to uh, go and speak to their speech a therapist. You're thinking probably a 10, 15, maybe in a room that you're going to sit and just conversate, you know, have a conversation with them, just one of them. You know. So I... I go to her office and she, she, he says, uh, we had to move to a larger room because of the interest of your article. And I said, how many? <laughs> and she said, well, they're already here and they're standing around the wall because all the chairs are filled and it's over a hundred. And I looked at her and I said, you are kidding. <laughs> he said, you have an hour to speak. And because that we are not a Christian university, I'm going to introduce you as a motivational speaker. <laughs> <laughs> True. I said, that's all right. I didn't have any anointed praise and worship to open it. I went in there and she introduced me and it was cold turkey. And I got up and for an hour I spoke to over a hundred people about what Jesus had done in my life. Mm. At the end of it, at the end of it, I looked out over it as I was beginning to share my testimony, basically. I saw tears all over the place. At the end of it, I said to them, I said, I'm not able to uh, hand out my uh, testimony because this is not a Christian university but if you would like to pick up a copy they're up here as you go out the door they came by people I didn't have a clue but they came by with tears streaming down their face saying thank you thank you and I wanted to say I'm just an ex-hippie <clears throat> 
who found Jesus. Everybody stand. I'm through. I wanted you to know tonight. I don't care who you are. Or how old you are. You can do all things. Through Christ which strengthens you. <clears throat> the, the great preacher Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber and 46 years old 46 years old and he heard the call to preach at 46. He can use you. He's not looking for talent. He's looking for availability. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. <coughs> so just lift your hands. I'm through. I'm fixed to turn it to you, Pastor. Father, tonight, I understand that faith comes in cans. Faith comes in cans. And I can do all things. I can achieve it. I can accomplish it. I can achieve it. And I can accomplish it. In Jesus' name. I pray for every person in this room tonight. That they will seek you. Or the place that they're supposed to be. To fulfill the calling on their life. That they can do all things. Through Christ. That strengthens them. It's more than a t-shirt. It's a fact. And I believe you. That there's an anointing that you're going to bring in this last days. And that you're going to, uh, to raise up. And that you're going to anoint a people that the church has forgotten about. And you're bringing them out of the of jails. You're bringing them out of the prisons. You're bringing them by out of the 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 uh, uh, bars. You're bringing them out of all types of places. And those that everybody has uh, rejected are the those that you're accepting and are ex accepting and you're anointing to do great things for your kingdom. And in this very city, in Hallettsville, in Yoka. There are people who just want somebody who will believe in them. And somebody that will take a chance on them. I thank you for that. That a first a, a pastor years ago who 